It happened almost six years ago along a stretch of Mississippi River. While testing a new bait called the spin bee, a jig with a spinner blade trailing off the end of it. Dan Gapen and Bobber Ann were using their custom underwater video system to study the lures action. But the most compelling discovery they made had to do with the water itself, more specifically, the current. And what they learned has the potential to change how you fish in rivers. For Midwest Outdoors, this is Mark Strand. And it's fun to see someone who's 83 get this excited about a discovery. Let's let Dan and Ann tell us more. We discovered this new structure about five and a half years ago. And it was actually was midsummer, five years ago. About that. Yeah. And uh, we were we were trolling the river, the, the edge of the river where the walleyes normally are. And uh, we were using the spin bee that we were, actually we were testing our new spin bee. It was one of the first times we took it out to try it out. And uh, we were chasing walleyes where we'd always caught them, but it was about the first week early. in August and the walleyes had disappeared. Now where, do, where are the walleyes? They're not where they normally are in the spring and the fall. They, they've gone somewhere else. They certainly didn't disappear from the river. So we decided, we, Annie had the underwater gear down, and we were filming and catching lots of smallmouth bass, mostly small ones. And we decided to go across the river, and rather than pull all of that underwater gear up, we decided to just leave it down and slowly go across the river. What they discovered on the underwater camera would lead them on a quest to understand what appeared to be a significant zone almost devoid of current well away from shore. They saw a big fish holding almost effortlessly near bottom, where the current should have been flowing at similar speed to the surface water. The scientific literature talks about a microscopically thin, zero current zone at the bottom of rivers called the benthic boundary layer, described as being so thin that even flat-bodied insects can barely dip their toes in it. What Dan and Ann found through underwater video showing the spinner blade of the spin bee either fluttering or stopped completely was a slack water zone that rises well above bottom, plenty big enough to let fish use it. It seemed unusual, yeah, because you think of, of current being um, the same always from top to bottom. It just seemed odd that when you got down that low, to the, close to the bottom that it stopped or it fluttered rather than spun you know like it would normally it just kind of fluttered or flopped and so that would indicate that there's a, um, a lessening of the current when you get you know reach that that depth. That was the beginning of what we call the zone Annie and I call it a zone. It's a, it's a new structure in rivers and all rivers have them. We, since that time we've fished all over North America and there isn't a river that doesn't have this same structure. And what we learned is that these structures appear as the water temperature gets warmer. We've discovered that like in July and August, they appear and they're bigger. In the spring, they're still there, but they're not as pronounced as they are in the summertime. Good news for readers of Midwest Outdoors magazine. Gapen and Bobber Ann tell us the whole story in an exclusive three-part series that starts in the January 2016 issue. Until then, a takeaway. How can we use their findings to help us catch more fish? Once the water temperature gets above 60 degrees, quit fishing the shoreline. If you want to catch fish that long, that's a good place to catch them. Now there will be there will be opposite to that. Somebody will say, "Well, I caught a five-pound smallmouth on the shoreline." That's true. They will come out of that deep water in the river, come into shore, looking for the old habitat that they had caught caught bait before. They're coming in there to work the shoreline where they'd found food before, but they always move back out into these 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 when the t water temperature is over 60 we find that they're moving out into the two-thirds of the center of the river. For river anglers young and old this is fascinating stuff. Watch for our three-part series in Midwest Outdoors magazine starting in the January issue and running through March. For now Midwest Outdoors will be right back.